Welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Democratic State Representative from Nashville, Brenda Gilmore, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host, Steve Gill. Welcome. Nice Thank to you. see you both again. Thank you. We've seen politicians behaving badly on both sides, both political parties, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Gary Hart, John Edwards. Anthony Weiner, though, may set the bar for what not to do as an elected official. It is a sad story. If you've got to feel sorry for his wife, going to have a baby. It's also a story of real stupidity. You can't not lie. It's always the lie that gets you, isn't it? I think it's what a lesson for all of us is if we do something wrong and if it's brought to light, I think the best thing is to apologize for anyone that you offended and to tell the truth. Because certainly you cannot run from a lie because it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And in the world that we live in today with social media, they will find out. Had he told the truth, could he survive, or was this one just too big and too bizarre? I think he exacerbated it by the lie, and not just the lie, but the combative nature mm -hmm. of, I didn't do this, how dare you ask whether I've done this? You know, he was pointing the finger yep. at the media, calling them jerks for, for distracting him from the people's business. Mm -hmm. They were pointing the finger at Andrew Breitbart, saying this was a smear campaign. And then it comes to light that not only did he do it, but he lied about it and was, was pointing the finger at others. But I think the underlying behavior is just so foul. I mean, this is not somebody that has a relationship with somebody they know. This guy is, as Tony Blankley told us earlier this week, the equivalent of an electronic flasher. He's the pervert in the park flashing his open rain raincoat to perfect strangers. This is sick on such a sordid level. And then you just throw in the added value for comedic purposes of his name. Right. This guy can't get beyond it. He says he won't resign. Democratic officials are beginning to say, you need to resign. He continued to say, just as of yesterday, he's not going to. Can he survive this? Can he hold on to his office? Would he be useful? Would he be able to represent his people? I think that he probably would be useful, however, I don't think he can survive. In, in, in fact, when I look at the poll figures as it affects President Obama, I think even uh, an offshoot of what's happening with uh, Wiener is falling over on the presidential. So I really don't think that he can survive. Uh, but if, if he's able to, I think that his uh, constituents would probably ally him, because we have to admit that politicians, elected officials, are people too. They probably would forgive him, I think, and allow him to go on, but I just don't think he can survive. Can he survive I think it? it gets worse for him, because the Congress has actually been out this week in their own districts around the country. On Monday, they come back to Washington, D.C., and all these Democrat members of Congress are being asked, you know, what's your position on this? You've had Debbie Wasserman Schultz, this is the chairman of the Democrat National Committee. She was defending him last week. She's going to have to answer. Uh, it's going to be tougher for the Democrats, and he's going to have to be looking at his colleagues face-to-face, eye-to-eye. The pressure will increase. The other thing is, is there another shoe to drop? There are a lot of indications that perhaps some of these women that he was sexting are underage. And if it's the first time you find a woman under age 18 who was getting these sex or this flirtation from this guy, it is over and he ought to be prosecuted. And I will have to commend, though, the Democrat Party. I think they've been very hard on him and they're mm -hmm. asking him to step up and do the right thing. So they're not certainly not sheltering him because of, of the party. New ABC poll out for the first time shows President Obama losing to a, Demo to a Republican challenger by name, not just a, an unknown, but Mitt Romney. Mm -hmm. It is early, 18 months out. GOP obviously is going to say, see, he's beatable. Or Democrats are going to say it doesn't mean a whole lot. Her Bill Fletcher say it means less than nothing. It has to mean a little more than that. It has to at least be a, 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 an inf indication that there is a, a weakness out there. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think 18 months in a political life is like a lifetime. It is a long time. <laughs> so it's very hard to make a prediction that something's going to happen in 18 months. I think if uh, unemployment improves, continue well if it improves we saw it blip it go up this last month i think that president obama has a real chance in almost every uh, facet that he's tried to make some changes which were campaign promises we've seen the improvement uh, it's a real miracle story what has happened in the car industry so i uh, i think if we can get unemployment taken care of that he he will have a chance and when you look back at the rac record of mitt uh, romney he didn't do very well as a governor i mean he's he's rich but he really, the state was in poor condition when he left. It was in poor condition when he got there and he improved it. The, the fact is the Democrats mm -hmm. were complaining in 2006 about $2 a gallon gasoline and 4.4% unemployment. I don't think it's going to get to that level on either count before the election. I would agree that, that this poll doesn't necessarily mean that Mount Romney can beat Obama right. 18 months from now. What this poll does the most of is let Romney go out to the Republicans and say, I can beat him. It helps him in the Republican primary. And then as we move ahead, keep in mind that this Washington Post ABC poll has a nine-point advantage advantage built in for the Democrats. So it's actually skewed in favor of Barack Obama, and he's still not looking at it. What the poll does show, too, as you talked about, mm -hmm. it is very clear the economy 
is going to be the deciding factor, is the issue this election. If the economy doesn't turn around, the president's in big trouble. I think so. I agree. I agree. And he wants it to. He's doing everything he can. And if he had a little help, I think, and support from the Republicans, <laughs> I think he could do even better. When you look, though, at Mitt uh, Romney and his health care, it's almost identical to what President uh, Obama has proposed. So I think it would be hypocritical of the Republican Party to say that they support him and they're opposed to President Obama's program. The health care issue is going to be an Achilles heel to some degree, though, for him. It, it will be. But the difference is Mitt Romney has said it didn't work. It's a mistake. Barack Obama is still saying full speed ahead. That's the difference. And more importantly, it was done at the state level rather than at the national level. You don't have the sort of constitutional issues that even the Court of Appeals this week was taking a look at and may throw out Obamacare. The bottom line is that Barack Obama is going to be judged on the economy. And while he might want some help from the Republicans, the help he wants is to do more of what's put us in the situation. He's already spent us $16 trillion in debt in this country, and the Republicans are rightly saying, that solution isn't working. We're not going to help you with more of the wrong Well, he was handed, I think you have to look at the cards that he was handed when he came in. We went all the way from a surplus to a deficit under President Bush. So those were the cards that he's playing. If he had not done some of the things that he's done, we were in the worst recession. And, and, and it would have been even worse. We probably would have seen unemployment in the double fit. 30 seconds ago, we how had, much we had an improvement do we need? billion dollar deficits, not 800 to $1.6 billion deficits. So I don't think you can blame it on George Bush. As Mitt Romney said, this for two and a half years has been Obama's economy. He put us where we are today. Well, a lot of it also has to do with the wars. Brenda Gilmore, Steve Gill, appreciate your time and your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment. Mm -hmm.